Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I want to talk to you about further building on the machine learning model that we built last week. And for those of you who are new to this channel, welcome. If you want to learn more about machine learning, application development, Python programming, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and follow along. And so for those of you who have not seen the video, look up, it's about to come up and you can go ahead and watch that video. And in that video, what we did is we built a machine learning model that's going to help us determine whether or not somebody is going to be approved for a loan based on certain data that we collected. So just to give you an idea of what that data looks like, we had certain information about them, you know, their gender, they're married, their number of dependents, and uh, so forth. So all this information we used, and we built a machine learning model to say, okay, is this person going to get approved for a loan or not? And so we did some pre-processing on this as well. Uh, we did some analytics in terms of the accuracy rate, which is the accuracy rate, which is 89% using a neural network. Um, and then somebody had also pointed out that, hey, listen, you know, you may want to look at a different way to measure this, and that is use something like a K-fold. And when I did the K-fold, I got about 80%, plus or minus 2% or so. So still not a bad model. Like I said, there's probably room for improvement. Uh, I haven't tweaked it too much. It's uh, sort of where I left it off. But then the question is, once you're done this, what do you do with this information? What happens to the model, and how do you actually start using it? So today we're going to talk about pickling your model. What pickling your model means is that once you've actually gone ahead and created your model and created the classifier and you've trained it, now you have a model that you can use over and over again to predict things. And in this case, our model is going to be called classifier. So what you can do with that is you can actually do something called pickling it. And that's where this little piece of code comes in. What this piece of code essentially does is it'll take your model, which in this case is classifier, and it'll store it in something called a pickle dump. Or in this case, you can use joblib as well. Both of them work fine. And in this case, what you're going to do is you're going to take your file and you're going to save it as something like loan underscore model dot PKL. And what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and store all of the different weights that this neural network had calculated to give you that, you know, pretty strong predictive model. And so once you do that, you can go ahead and use that. So once I go ahead and pickle this model, I'm going to go ahead and store this classifier in this file name, which is loan model dot pickle. And so if I were to just show you what that looks like, that's right there, loan model dot pickle. And so now what you can do is, let's say you want to come back a week or two later and you want to predict something based on it. So you don't have to have this running all the time. Then what you would do is you would go ahead and now start your new Jupyter Notebook or whatever IDE you're going to be using. And you can always call back that machine learning model. So to do that, we're going to build that together and I'm going to show you how to use it. But the benefit of this is, especially when you're running something like an application and you want to do something like, let's just say a loan approval here in this case. Every time I run that, I'm hitting the server and the server would go ahead and compute this neural network and then come, about, come out with this model. And that's very computationally expensive and it's heavy for the system and the server to continue to do that. If your model's not going to change too often, you know, if it's something that I can use on a daily basis and it doesn't need a whole lot of updates, like maybe once a week or so, this is a great way to do it because it's already pre-compiled and it's stored in this file. Alternatively, you can have your machine learning model run every night or when the load is really low on your server to go ahead and create this pickle model so that you can run this more in optimal and more busy times. So let's go ahead and recall this model. So what I'm going to call this model, so MDL is going to be equal to joblib dot load so basically I'm recalling this file and I'm saying let's go ahead and load it so load underscore model dot pkl and so what I've done now and I'm getting an error because that's supposed to be loan not load so what I've done is I've loaded this model and now it's ready for me to use so the next thing for me to do this is remember when I actually have my data my data is coming forward in this format so this is my test data that I'm going to put through it's an Excel file with the exact same data, except it's condensed. So in this case, I have all the information here, though it's not scaled yet. So it has been one hot encoded already, which is fine. And if you don't have it one hot encoded, you could just take this a step prior, bring in your raw data, one hot encoded, and then you're going to get this format. So either way, it's going to work out, but it's still not scaled. So what I want to do is I want to take my data and I want to scale it. So first and foremost, let's bring in my data. So we're going to say x is equal to pd dot read underscore excel test dot xls x all right so now i've brought in my excel file so if i were to just go ahead and show you what that looks like 
And so as it's running it, it's basically showing you what we saw. So we had about 18 rows or so, and this is the information. But again, this data is not scaled yet. So the next step for me to do is to scale this. And it really depends, like I said, how you bring in this data. You can bring it pre-scaled. You can bring it pre-one-hot encoding. You can do all of that in here. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just going to take a little bit more time if you do it on the, what I would call, what the application is going to use to go and pull the data from. My preference is also have this pre-done so that there's minimal load when the application is trying to pull the information because you don't want to use up a lot of server usage and memory and all that stuff to do all of this stuff. So it's nice to have it pre-compiled if possible. All right, so now we're going to scale this. So we're going to say x underscore test is equal to sc, and I have to obviously bring in my scalar, which I forgot to define up here. So let's go ahead and bring that scalar right here. sc is equal to min max scalar. All right, so now that's been brought in. So now we're going to do sc dot fit underscore transform. And we're going to say X because that's what I wanted to go ahead and transform in this case. So let's do this. And now let's see what X test gives me just out of curiosity. It should be scaled. Oops, underscore. And so as you can see, it gives me an umpire array and it's all been scaled and that's exactly what we wanted. So perfect. So now we can use this as our input. So next I'm going to go ahead and say Y predict is equal to and now we're going to bring in model. So basically I'm referencing this job lib model, all the weights that were in this neural network. I'm going ahead and referencing that and I'm saying, let's bring that model in. And when we bring in that model, we're going to use this X value, the scaled X value to go ahead and do a prediction. But at the same time, remember in the previous video, I also said that I want to set my thresholds because there are certain thresholds that I feel work better. And you can always go ahead and play with these thresholds to see whatever works out. But 0.58 seemed to have done the job pretty well last time. All right, so now that we ran that, we get no errors, perfect. So now we want to go ahead and see what this looks like. So when I look at this, it's giving me a whole bunch of different true falses, true falses. Now, what does that really mean? Remember last time we said that anything that was a one, that means that you were approved and we classify that as a true. So in this case, true is equal to approved, false is equal to rejected. But we, would, we don't want to output the data looking like this. We want it to look a little bit nicer. So let's go ahead and create this into a data frame. So pd.dataframe, and we'll do y underscore predict. And then we'll just say columns is equal to status, because I just that's a status I want to see. So the, it's going to show me uh, my index. It'll show me the status up top, and then whether it's been a, approved or rejected. You'll see what I mean in a second. But it's just a nicer, cleaner way to see it. So val. And now we're going to go ahead and replace anything that says true. I want to replace using a dictionary with approved. And anything that is false, I want to replace with rejected. And let's go ahead and print out a result. All right, so when I see this now, this is cool. It says approved, approved, rejected, and so forth. And so really, when you think about it, I've only written a few line of code because the model is already pre-developed for me. And so this is, like I said, really lightweight. If you saw there was no processing, you know, like in the previous uh, video, we saw TensorFlow doing its thing. There's none of that happening here. And especially when you're running a lot of epics and a lot of iterations, this becomes incredibly important. And so, like I said, you can pickle this thing. You can go ahead and rerun your model overnight so that it updates your model if you'd like, your pickled model. And, uh, and now you have access to a pre-trained model that you can use any kind of new data set to. So this was kind of the primer to what I want to do next. And that is I want to use Django to build an API. And in that API, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to take this information for an applicant to go in and put in all that information about whether they're married, whether they're single and all that other great information that was in our test data. So I want to be able to create a form that says, you know, do you have any dependents? What's your, what does it say? What's your income and all this other stuff. So they can just fill all the information out. They hit the run button. And after they hit the run button, I'm going to do an API call back to my pickled model and which is supposed to go ahead and output whether they've been approved or rejected. So we're going to build that in some of the upcoming videos, but I wanted to do this first to show you why I'm pickling this so that I can build such an API. If I didn't pickle the model, then I would be re I'd be running basically all of this stuff in the background, the neural network stuff in the background. And although I haven't ran a ton of different epics, I think I had about I remember, I think I had 100 or so. So 100 epics and a batch size of 25. You know, if you're doing this at the enterprise level, you're probably doing a lot more epics, you know, different batch sizes and so forth. So it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, as a result, when you pickle it, you just, 
use the model. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, if you do like this, please consider commenting and subscribing, and I will see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.